In the last module, we looked at number synthesis, which covers one aspect of mechanism synthesis. In the next three modules, we will cover one approach to mechanism synthesis, namely graphical methods. In this module, however, we will give an overview of mechanism synthesis. Broadly speaking, mechanism synthesis or linkage synthesis methods can be divided into two categories qualitative synthesis and quantitative synthesis. In qualitative synthesis, there is no well-defined algorithm or method by which you are producing the candidate designs. Usually, an experienced designer has access to a CAD software or some mechanism simulation and analysis software, and they sketch or create different concept designs using these softwares. The reason such a process is undertaken is mainly because in any design problem, there are many more variables than you can describe with equations. And a designer has to work in this fuzzy context to create potential solutions and judge its quality. Usually, to judge the quality, some mechanism analysis software is used. So the essential process is that the design is qualitative, but then you have quantitative analysis and that analysis guides you towards a new qualitative design. On the other hand, in quantitative synthesis methods, there is a well-defined synthesis algorithm that generates one or more solutions. And these problems are usually solved with a set of equations. Usually, quantitative synthesis is performed using analytical methods and it is also called analytical synthesis. Type synthesis of a mechanism is one form of qualitative synthesis. In type synthesis, what you want to do is you want to define the proper type of mechanism that is best suited for the problem. And this requires experience and knowledge of various types of mechanisms. As an example, let us think about designing a device to track the straight line motion of a part on a conveyor belt and spraying it with a coating. There are multiple types of mechanism that one can choose here. I will focus on three of them. The straight line linkage, the cam and follower, and a robot. An experienced designer will know that any one of these three types of mechanisms can be used to solve the problem. The advantage of the straight line linkage is that it is a pretty simple solution. The advantage of the cam and follower is that it will be very accurate. Similarly, the robot will also be accurate. On the other hand, the disadvantage of straight line linkage may be that it may not be possible to include it within the packaging constraints that are available. Cam and follower may be expensive and require maintenance. Robots may also be expensive and require programming. So which one of these three should be chosen ultimately will depend on other external factors like the volume of production, the cost of production, the reliability required, etc. Quantitative synthesis, on the other hand, can be divided into two types of synthesis problems. Number synthesis, which we have seen before, and dimensional synthesis. As we have seen before, in number synthesis, we want to determine the number of links, order of links, and number of joints to produce motion of a desired degree of freedom. So when we do number synthesis, we are assuming that we have already decided through type synthesis that the best mechanism here is a linkage. In dimensional synthesis, what we have to do is to determine the lengths of the links necessary to accomplish the desired motion. And this is something that we will spend quite a bit of time on. When we perform dimensional synthesis, we assume that the type of mechanism has been determined through type synthesis and number synthesis has also been performed. The next fundamental question that arises is, why do we want to synthesize linkage? There are three typical classes of application for linkages, function generation, path generation, and motion generation. In function generation, the relative motion between input 
and output links is of importance. The output link here is usually the follower link. The coupler motion is usually not of interest. In path generation, it is of interest that a point on the coupler traces a desired path. Note that only the path of the trace point is of interest, not the rotation of the coupler link. In motion generation, on the other hand, the entire motion of the coupler is of interest. It includes both the path tracer point coordinates and the angular orientation of the coupler link. More precisely, in function generation, the output motion is defined as a mathematical function of the input motion. For example, the output x can be a simple harmonic function of the input angle theta. In path generation problem, the output motion is a defined path given by a set of xy coordinates. So there will be a set of discrete coordinates that will be defined and will be asked to follow this path. In motion generation, we will have x, y as well as theta. So if we think of a reference frame on the coupler, the origin of the reference frame on the coupler and the angle theta, all three are important. So we will have sequences of xi, yi, theta i that will be given to us, which will be sequences of reference frames. You can visualize them like this. Now let's look at some examples. A very common example of a function generator is the motion of a sprinkler. What we want is that an input crank that produces an oscillatory motion of an output. Usually this is done with a rocker crank mechanism and the output is the range of oscillation of the sprinkler head. Now the picture shown here is a four bar rocker crank mechanism and let's first understand that that is true. So A0, B0 is my ground link 1, A0, A is my crank 2, A, B is my coupler 3 and my output link is B0, B. Now at this point I would like to remind you again that understanding a link as an abstraction of a physical object is helpful. You should see here that from the figure there is no physical line present between B0 and B. Let's think of this bar here as U and this bar here as V. The bar U and V are connected by this revolute joint here and the bar V is also clamped to an extension of the bar U with the clamping screw. So in essence there is no relative motion between U and V. U, V as well as this extension here they form a rigid body. This rigid body is connected to AB at this node here and it is connected to the ground at B0. Therefore B0B is the output link and you can understand that by changing the point at which the screw is clamped I can change the length of B0B thereby changing the rocker angle. Another example of the function generator is the scotch yoke mechanism. This is a mechanism which produces an exact simple harmonic motion of the output slider. Theta is my angle of rotation of the crank here and x is the displacement of the slider. In this mechanism, there are three links. The ground is link 1, the crank is link 2 and the slider is link 3. There are two one degree of freedom joints, the prismatic joint here and the revolute joint here. So J1 equal to 2. And there is one two degree of freedom joint, the spin in a slot joint, J2 equal to 1. Using Grubler's equation, you can see that this is a one degree of freedom mechanism. And that input degree of freedom is the crank here, which if you control, you can control the output motion of the slider. An example of a path generator is the film advance mechanism. This is again a four bar mechanism where we want the point C on the coupler to approximately follow the straight line vertically downwards. This hooked portion here denoted by the point C locks into the gap on the side of the film and pulls the film downward. At this point, 
it disengages and it goes back and pulls it again. There are two such mechanisms pulling the film from two sides and that's how the film gets advanced. Another example of a path generator is a crane. Here P is the tracer point on the coupler. So one is the ground, two is one link, three is the coupler link and four is the other link. We want the tracer point P to follow a straight line approximately. An example of a motion generator where both the position and orientation of the coupler is of interest is the car hood mechanism. The linkage controls the relative orientation between the hood and the car frame. And the hood is actually connected to the coupler or it is the coupler link. So the four bar mechanism is shown in the picture here. The spring here holds the hood in the desired position. However, from the picture, it should be clear that the mechanism is a four bar mechanism. This is the end of the overview of mechanism synthesis. In the next three modules, or starting from the next class, we will start learning graphical procedures for mechanism synthesis. And we will be mainly concentrating on motion generation, although we will be also looking at a couple of examples of synthesis for function generation.